What is your favorite Kelly Clarkson song? I have to go old school. I have to say Since You've Been Gone, because it just reminds me of middle school. How about you, Penn? Oh, Love So Soft. Love So Soft. Why is that yeah. your favorite? Because uh, it's got the deepest groove, maybe. Mm. Um, I, no, it's a, it's, I, yeah, I don't know. It's always stood out to me. I just like it. My favorite song is off her new album that hopefully you're all streaming, and it's called Magic. And we got a, we got a preview of the album, and I streamed it like 30 times. And every time I wanted to stream it, I had to log back into this thing. So it like took effort for me to listen to it that many times. But absolutely, wow, you love really, it. you persevered, Nobs. Yeah, it's like amazing. I'm going to listen to the song again. All it's for so Kelly. Good. Does she all know? Does she know? I'm going to tell her. I'm going to tell what her what we've done for her. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We're making her career. <laughs> So you already know who it is. We got Kelly Clarkson today, guys. Uh, singer, songwriter, television personality. Her career highlight reel is just is staggering. She's the first ever winner of American Idol, which, by the way, I forgot. I had kind of filed it away as like, oh, it's one of the early seasons, but she is the yeah. first Number winner one. of American Idol. Uh, she's got 25 million albums sold, three Grammys, three VMAs. She's hailed as one of the greatest pop vocalists of all time. She has, uh, she has her show, The Kelly Clarkson Show, and she's in four years, she's got five daytime Emmy Awards. Her kindness and generosity of spirit, I think, is what people know her for, is, is what we found today. You're and I just want to say, as a big fan of The Voice, that Kelly Clarkson, a judge on The Voice, was really the only judge who ever gave Blake Shelton a run for his money. I think statistically, she won more times than he did. Wow. The, um, that can't be true. He's the king. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Um, he's not my king, but he is the king, right? True. Uh, we don't have Blake Shelton today. We have Kelly Clarkson. Just a reminder, you stick around. We'll be right back. Welcome to Pod Crushed. We're your hosts. I'm Penn. I'm Sophie. And I'm Nava. And I think we would have been your middle school best. <laughs> Sing screaming Kelly Clarkson songs into our hairbrushes all night long. <laughs> You have exceptional hair. Oh. <laughs> like the Thank beard you. game, the hair, I'm like. Winning at those games. That's, yes. I was Thank like, you. that's like exceptional. Really? Uh, okay, it's, you know, my, my yeah. wife really does not like it at this point. Oh, really? Maybe, maybe, maybe that's Wait, a bit the too beard extreme. or the longer hair? <laughs> Which one? Because like some women either. don't just like beards. Just pen in general. And, and I'm yeah. opposite. I cannot, like, yeah, I even went up with my ex, I was like, if you shave, I don't know that I will actually kiss you or like make out. Because <laughs> like, it, he looked so boyish when he, yeah. Yeah. and yeah, it felt yeah, yeah. weird yeah. for me. Yeah. <laughs> so I was yeah. like, uh uh. But some of my friends don't like it because the chafing, like when you're kissing a guy with like a beard or whatever, mm. like it's so yeah. like some well, people don't like it. It goes from being of complete lack of effort. Yeah. Like, did you just let it grow? Yeah. To then to not look fully disheveled. Mm. I gotta, I have to do enough things like the oil and the trimming that it's, yeah. it is more work than I would prefer. It's grooming. Yeah. 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 I am very lazy, Pen. Like, I don't do anything. <laughs> when I'm not like, this is a per, like, people did this. Yeah. I'm <laughs> yeah. With you on that. yeah. Like, I am very, mm. I don't wear makeup. I don't. That's why people, I feel like in our industry, when you're not working, you just like, you don't. It's it's too much yeah. all the time. Yeah. So it's right. like when you're not, I just my face wants to breathe, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah, that's fair. But does it does it change how you feel going out? I actually noticed I had to go buy something at a mall yesterday, and I looked so bad. <laughs> I just I just had done <laughs> nothing, and I heard someone say Sophie, but they were talking to somebody else. But I was like, oh my god. I hope no, I hope no one I know is here right now. I'm yeah. thinking if you're if you're famous, does that change mm. how you feel about going out in public? Not for me. I cannot express you how much I don't care. <laughs> like, yeah. That's amazing. I, just, I feel like I do care. I just care about things that I think are important. And yeah. I I don't know. I feel like like he was saying, like what's your job all the time to be like on and done and. Mm -hmm. You know, I get it. Whatever. It's I don't mind playing dress up. Like my team is incredible. Honestly, when they get through, I feel like we should pay them more because it's like yeah. mm -hmm. this is Harry Potter level level skill. <laughs> <laughs> like this is not what I look like in Target. So <laughs> it's like it's real different. Do you know the the framing of this show? Like the middle school yes. vibe. Yes. Okay. Cool. Such hard years. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Well, they are in some way for everybody. Yeah. Like the truth is, being young is actually there's something about oh, it that it's is intense. uniquely difficult. Yeah. So when you when I would never do it again. <laughs> well, guess what? Yeah, you can't. But walk, yeah. but walk us but through you know it. People yeah. are like, you know when people are like, oh, I'd totally go back to college or I'd totally yeah, go back yeah. to high school. I'm like, I would never mm. do yeah. any of that. Like, no. 
No. Yeah. So yeah. Um, we, we, we did get an advanced copy of your record. You have a song where you say, uh, I'm actually going to read it because I want to make sure I get it right. Yeah. Well, you, 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 you basically say love is a bitch and then you apologize to your mom. Yeah, Which, and I'm 41. Right, <laughs> and so clear. So that that gives us at least a glimpse of a very big your glimpse. household growing up. Yeah, so, I mean, you know, just, so just just paint a picture of us of what was it what was it like for you living with your mom? Yeah, um, well, it was different. So I didn't just li- like there were there are moments. I mean, I feel like my upbringing involved a lot of different environments, which is probably why I'm highly adaptable. Um, mm. But I. I mean, if, you know, for moments we were alone and it was just us. Then there were my brother and sister lived with us and we were really little like that. So I remember parts of that. And then she got remarried. So there's different parts there. So um, all of that, though, she is very different from me. Like my mother looks at my sister and I like we're aliens, like where mm. she's very like, you know, just more conservative and like um, reserved. Like she'll. She'll give your opinion, trust. But I just mean once she gets to know you, she's kind of shy. Mm. Right. And my sister and I are like complete opposites of that like we're not shy at all so is your sister older or younger she's older but you'll you'd probably think i'm the older one everybody always does (laughs) she's seven and a half years older it's such a bitch (laughs) (laughs) i'm like i'm i'm the younger one (laughs) they're like but she she's awesome but we we actually grew up separately so and my brother we all grew up very separately so it was just a very different upbringing but um but a lot of it was very religious and so you know definitely you did not curse. I didn't. I was not allowed, ironically enough, to listen to secular music or perform it for a minute. Until <laughs> until how old? Um, I think that was just a unit until I moved out. Oh, okay. <laughs> then, oh wow. And then I was like, turns out I'm gonna sing secular music. Kelly, <laughs> but, did you uh, sneak it? Like, did you ever listen yes. to secular music? Yeah, yeah. Oh okay. my god, I didn't even know what I was singing either. Right? Like Red Light yeah. Special TLC, that creep record. <laughs> Love what that the song. Hell? Why am I singing that at like in junior high? I was like, that is so inappropriate. My mother had no idea. How did you sneak it? I I had a whole stash in my closet that my mother never knew about. Wow, she never went in your closet? Not really. So she trusted you then? I don't know if it was so much trust. And I think it was just. um, Well, it would have been unfound. She was like, if you close your door, like to your room, like, you know, she was like, just close your door. Like, I wasn't like messy, but I wasn't. Mm. Maybe how she wanted me to. I'm, I'm, I like to say creative. I was creative. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. But yeah, no, she she kind of let me be. I was pretty independent very young. So mm. that's cool. Yeah, but no, I snuck it. Yeah, but I was told once I wasn't allowed to sing. Like it was, I'd gone into like a competition. I didn't re- really even realize how. Like I, I didn't listen to a, a lot of secular in front of here. I did every now. It depended on the year, y'all. It depended on who was married and who was, it just depended mm. on a lot of things but mm. um it was very different all the time so right, right. i just kept my thing the same in my closet <laughs> like, yeah but like yeah. she found out i was listening to jagged little pill and mm. was not excited about that <laughs> and so i how, still listened to it you, well naturally yeah, <laughs> yeah. How, how old were you then do you think was that like i was in junior high so okay. i don't know i was probably like seventh eighth grade when that came out what uh what songs do you think spoke most to you then well that's the thing too i kind of really didn't know what i was Mm. listening to fully i don't i think i grasp Mm. it like i can grasp it as a woman at this point um but um i don't you know it's still that that hidden track that she had at the very end that was acapella Mm. oh i love that song that was not a record that i was into so i don't know what you're talking about oh my god yeah. it's literally one of the best-selling records of all time i know i know it's an amazing record. You, i mean I know, I know the record were you but i just allowed don't know to the listen end. to i mean because i still listen to nirvana i listen to everything yeah, yeah and yeah. i also listen to christian stuff too like mm-hmm. I, I listen to a bunch of stuff but like wait you didn't listen to i don't know anyone yeah, that, that was not that you're the that first th- human really <laughs> you were the first human i've ever met that has not been like oh a my unicorn. god that record yeah. Yeah, it just wasn't. I mean, look, there's a lot of. We all have gaps somewhere. Like hmm. that's just one of mine. I didn't. I'm trying to think. You're a lot younger than me, though. Maybe. Maybe? You're not a lot no, younger I'm than 36. you. I'm 36. Oh, I thought you were 30. Yeah. Oh, okay, you're yeah. 36. I'm 41. So, yeah, so we're there's no excuse. Right there. you, missed should have been listening. you missed it though. You're an elementary. I, I, I you were like a baby. Was talking about. <laughs> but yeah. you're young. You actually yeah. missed it. Yeah, I was like, yeah. y'all missed, missed it. That's why. Yeah. No, I was into it. I did not miss it. Okay. So good. You're the coin. Okay, I got you now. Kelly. (laughs) (laughs) Kelly, I want to hear a little bit more about you in middle school. And I want you to tell us, when did you know you were into music in like a special way? Or when Mm -hmm. did you realize that that was a talent of yours? Well, that's actually pretty interesting because I grew up 
in church and everyone sings. Mm. <laughs> like, and everyone sings mm. well. I don't know if that's normal for everybody else's upbringing, but I feel it's like just I, Christians. No, just Christians. We were just yeah. The rest y'all were shite. <laughs> but no, no. I I just meant like even in my town, like even in our like yeah. choral groups, mm. like I everybody's always like, oh, you've like such a great voice. I'm like, yeah, I grew up with like a lot of great singers. I feel like mm. like I don't mm. I don't I didn't feel like I really stood out um, until there was like kind of a moment in junior high, and it, I think I was eighth eighth grade maybe. Um, when I just kind of noticed I could hit things that maybe mm. other people couldn't hit and like mm. with more of a belt and cause we're all imitators, right? At first, like of course, of yeah. whatever yeah. art you're into. Um, I listened to a lot of like big female singers, like, and even male, like Steven Tyler was one of my favorites. So, um, I just, I think I figured that out and other people kind of, it wasn't even, I figured it out. Other people kind of said, Hmm. wow you're like really good at that and I was like what hmm. okay like I didn't it's like other people almost told me yeah. and then you're like all right like and then I found out in like high school I was like wait you can make money like really doing that like even because I didn't ever want to be like who I am now like I didn't ever want to be like the main th my whole thing was I wanted to be a background singer because I love different oh, genres yeah. of music yeah. Because honestly, mama didn't aim that high. So <laughs> um, I just, you know what I'm saying? Like, this rarely happens. Like, it's like, yeah. a, no, it's you totally know, right. it's yeah. rarely Statistically, happens. Statistically, it basically doesn't. Exactly. You can't yeah. expect it's like a it. crazy aligning yeah. of the planets. Like, it's like, yeah. you know, I'm very yeah. lucky and it's a lot of hard work, but also a lot of luck. So, mm -hmm. um, and in all fairness, I actually did want to be a background. So, like, I love the background yeah. parts. I love harmony. I grew mm. up singing harmony. I love that they're more intricate, more challenging parts. I love that they're more interesting. Yeah. And I wanted to sing with a bunch of different artists. So um, that was kind of my my big goal. Um, you know, and then that went to shite. So <laughs> turns out uh, I went the lead route <laughs> with after American yeah. Idol. <laughs> and was that really the turning point? Where, I mean, where you shifted from, like, you know, whatever previous vision to, huh? Well, yeah, my, my place had burned. So I was working as a background singer in L.A., um, right after high school, a little bit after I, I moved um, out to L.A. And I worked as a background singer. I did a bunch of things. Got, got paid. I thought that was incredible, like, learning that, oh, my God, you can get paid mm -hmm. for doing this and, like, make a living mm -hmm. out of this. That's incredible. Um, I didn't want a boring, like, cubicle job. Sorry, cubicle job people. That's so great for you. <laughs> it's just not for all of us um, who are ADHD. Yeah. Um, and so I, I don't know. I think whenever I moved out there, my place burned down. Um and I lived in my car for a few days, and then I finally had enough money to go back home to, like, save up money to come back out here. Because I don't know if y'all have heard, but, like, living in L.A. is very expensive. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, yeah. And anyway, so, and I don't know. Wait, Kelly, like, can I jobs. just interrupt you quickly to ask yeah. what was it like when your building burned down? What, I mean, that's uh, real, just we're crazy. Super shitty. Yeah, like, it was, yeah. Uh, we moved in that day. That <gasps> what? Is, that you is, moved in and it burned? Was it an apartment, is, by the way? The Croft Apartments on Croft Avenue off of Melrose. Wow. <laughs> it was, wow. I don't even know if they're still there, if it's different now. Because um, if it didn't burn, it had smoke and water damage to, so like, everything. Mm -hmm. And I literally left. We moved our stuff in. Because before that, I had just been living on, like, a mattress, basically, with this other chick that I barely knew that I moved there with and had, wow. you know, one room and a bathroom, no kitchen. Mm -hmm. It was, like, college, like a dorm mm -hmm. situation yeah. almost um, in this person's house. So we had just saved up. Um, money to move into this apartment, move stuff in. Our insurance didn't kick in until it was like the next day or two. Cause like, what are the chances, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, no, truly. And then uh, went to Chili's to get some to go, and some chips and salsa, and came back. And they were like, "You can't get through here." And we were like, "Oh, we just need to get to our apartment." And they were like, "You can't." <laughs> Literally wow. hours within we moved in. Yeah. That's yeah. crazy. It was Kelly. pretty crazy. Yeah. There is footage of me on the side of the street looking like um not great. And like, you know, I'd I've been moving all day, like with a handkerchief oh in my, my head. Like it was yeah. Cause they were like, Oh, wow. we heard you just moved in. Yep. Wow. So when I heard that story, it made me wonder what is your relationship to fate? Like the fact that that happened and then you you as I understand it, you auditioned for American Idol partly because I moved of the home. Fire. Like literally, I yeah lived in my car for a few days because I had I was finishing out a job and I had a Crunch gym gym membership and that's where oh, I yeah. showered. Crunch gyms. <laughs> um, and, yeah. and then I just was like, this is going to be too difficult. The roommate that I'd moved out there with, we were very very different individuals, mm. um, so that was already kind of a little hard. Um, mm. And uh, yeah, I just, I was like, all right, I'll just move. I, I pivot very easily. I think like coming mm. back to that childhood stuff, like I've had to adapt. Like 
yeah. a lot of my life, which I'm actually very grateful for. I'm not complaining. Mm -hmm. I just mean I think it helps me in this career, and I think it helps mm -hmm. me in life. Like, just be like, all right, we got to pivot. So, mm. um, but, yeah, no, I, I wasn't even – I didn't, like, cry or anything. I just – I think it was more hysterical. I was like, what are the chances of this happening yeah. to someone? You just went to Chili's. I just that doesn't went even take to, that long. To not even go and eat and sit down. It was to right. go. It was Back hot when to go was car. new. Yes. Wow. It was Might hot have saved in your the life car. though. Yeah. So. Yeah, I mean, maybe everybody made it out. I'm pretty I don't think anybody mm. And they never really said, like, we were kept trying to figure out, because we were new. Obviously, we'd been there for mm. hours. So I I don't even ever remember figuring out how it started or no one wanted yeah. to take credit for that number. So, yeah. yeah. So it was it was a really it was a really weird night. And I'm not going to out this organization, but one of the biggest aid organizations ever turned us away. Like we had nowhere to go. And like we walked wow. in because they said, oh, if you go to this church, it was like a like a, you know, like a gym or something attached to mm. a church or whatever. One of their fellowship halls or something. And. They were like, oh, we have too many in here. And it was like, I is that a, can you do that? Or is that, is that like what your whole mm. point is? So, yeah. Mm. And my roommate ran off with these randos. And we're like, I'm going to go stay with them. And I was like, well, I'm not going to become a Dateline special. So I'm going <laughs> to hang out in my car. I was like, I'm just going to. Wow. And I don't even remember seeing her after that. Have there been other moments in your life when something like seemingly kind of catastrophic happens and then it, it leads to something greater? I mean, honestly... Uh, I'd say the most catastrophic thing was probably my divorce. So, yeah, that mm -hmm. that um, mm -hmm. was pretty horrible. And just, you know, you don't see it coming because you, you see the struggle, obviously, for years. But, like, and you try or whatever. But, you know, I think when you're in that, you cannot see anything else yeah. in front of mm -hmm. you. Like, it's just it really is all consuming grief in general. So yeah. um, I think that turned into like all of a sudden now I live like I literally live in New York now and I'm done mm -hmm. in LA and I've never wanted to live in LA so it was very beautiful that mm -hmm. I got the opportunity to move the show here and mm -hmm. and oh, your show's now I have now. this wow. yeah we're starting fifth season in the fall here at 30 Rock so, Congrats, so my whole Kelly. life so something horrible that happened but now yeah. came this beautiful thing like I'd been writing something for Broadway I'd a musical theater mm -hmm. kid like I'd been doing stuff that like kind of was leading up to this and I didn't know, you know? And so it ended yeah. up, yeah, it's ended up being this really beautiful thing. So, yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. That's amazing. But you don't see in the moment. Yeah. <laughs> no, and people sure. tell you, oh, it's going to happen. You're like, shut up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we have a couple questions we ask everyone to, since we're sort yeah. of on the topic. Do you remember your first love and your first heartbreak? I actually didn't fall in love, like love, love until I was 30. So like, wow. um, yeah, I didn't even know that. But that's real. By the way, that's that's fair. I think that's, that's probably yeah. very common, and I, I'm I, I hear yeah, you. Yeah, I don't know that it's common where I'm from. I think they yeah. pretty much think you're dead if you're single at thirty. Sure, <laughs> like where I'm from. but that's not necessarily love. No, totally, also, exactly. You know. That's what I'm saying. Like I I didn't really know love until yeah. until my ex. But um, my first like big crush, his name was Matthew Michael Penwarden, wow. and wow. he was. Um, he worked at the movie theater. My first job was a movie theater, and I was, like, 17, and he was older, and he was funny. I really like funny. So um, yeah. he was cute, too. I just mean, like, humor is my thing. So, yeah. Um, I, I, yeah, I love, I thought he was so adorable. Like, I didn't love him, like, real love him, but yeah. I just mean, sure. like, you know, he was my first big, like, huge crush. But I'm, like, late. Like, I'm, like, yeah. I feel like, like, even my daughter, like, she's, she could be boy crazy. Like, I, yeah. I was never... <laughs> Really boy crazy. Like, I was just, like, mm -hmm. ah, boy crazy, like, around 17. Yeah. <laughs> like What happened with that guy? Um, well, he was a lot older, so that's inappropriate. Oh. So, and he had a <laughs> girlfriend. And, um, oh, yeah. anyway, um, so. Some details we left out in the <laughs> Some first children. Time. Yeah, but, but I will say, um, he ended up, it was, like, I think, like, a year later or something. He, he, was, he oh, actually, something, hor I just remember what happened to him. Um, horrible <laughs> happened with his ex at that time. And, oh, um, no. and then we ended up, like, we kind of talked for a minute, but then it just wasn't. That's the thing. I think he's great, but it just when you actually start talking to someone that you've kind of put up on a pedestal, then you're kind of like, I think I built you up differently than I thought you actually were. You know, I think mm -hmm. you do that yeah. a lot in your youth as well. Um, or during your marriage <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> um, but I just, yeah, that was, I, I think, you know, we had a little like date thing, but like it wasn't like a huge, we never really... 
dated kind of thing. But like, yeah, it, yeah I don't. It, I just kind of recognized. I was like, I think I thought you were someone you weren't. Like, you know, mm. it, it was. I built you up to be somebody that was different that I thought was more for yeah. me. But yeah, but he was really funny, and it was a fun crush. Like, what a beautiful. I love that. I hate whenever people yeah. are like, oh, you're too young to actually know it. I'm like, shut up. Mm -hmm. Let them have their moment. It's such a beautiful, yeah. free, um, you're not jaded. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Like, I will say, though, that is the first time I've ever been crushed, though, too. Because I'm the one who I'm I'm not old school. I'm not like old fashioned. I told him I liked him. Mm -hmm. And like once he was available, I'm not that girl. Um, but yeah. like once he was available, I, I told him <laughs> I had a crush. And he was like, oh, that's so cute. And I was like, oh, shit. Uh, <laughs> that's like, not what you want to hear. Yeah. Yeah, no. <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah, yeah psh, I'm so cute. Um, yeah. So I'm going to go. <laughs> I was like, um, so that was that was devastating. That was. Yeah, yeah. that sucked. But mm, yeah. character growth, yeah. <laughs> like, exactly. it'll bring out the funny. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Did you feel like after experiencing a rejection like that, after you were bold enough to tell him how you felt? Yeah. Did you continue to do that in your life or what did it kind of did you shy away from doing that again? I'm like incapable of shying away. Like I just <laughs> if I want something, I just pretty much go for it. Even with my ex, like I made the first move like. Mm -hmm. If I if I want something, I'll pretty much just tell you. Um, you get crushed sometimes because actually my ex crushed me at first whenever we had that conversation. But um, mm -hmm. it was a little awkward. Just the his father was my manager. It was just really complicated. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. um, but yeah, no, I I don't know. I never I'm not like that person that like gets beaten down and like doesn't try mm -hmm. again. Mm -hmm. I will keep trying even when I know there's no way to win. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. like I'm that person innately. Yeah. I'm like uh, mm -hmm. forever an optimist. So um, or delusional, whichever way yeah. you want to go. <laughs> like, uh, but yeah, no, it, it does crush you, though. There's those. I mean, you that's where a lot of my songwriting and stuff comes from, too, is yeah. that like devastation. You're like, ooh. but I also think what a wonderful thing to experience. Like if you're experiencing that that depth of devastation then you're also experiencing that depth of like magic i think so yeah. of course that's yeah. that i mean that's why we use the period of life because it's like the first time that suddenly you're open to mm -hmm. the kind of feelings and thoughts and ideas you're going to be having for the rest of your life mm -hmm. before that you actually just even neurobiologically all that stuff you just weren't mm -hmm. able to have and then suddenly it's open mm -hmm. and so who you are in those early stages is a really interesting it's just a really interesting sweet spot that never happens again. Yeah. I'm just kind of curious, like, where, where's the, where's at, at 12 and 13 years old, like, how, how did, how did you feel about yourself as an artist and a performer? Was that already there, you know? I think, yeah, I, I think it maybe around the age of 13 is whenever I really started to think I, I just, I guess there, it's a really cool thing when you're a kid and. I don't know, you find something you feel special at, that you feel like mm. you stand out in a way, especially when it's so hard, because sometimes you want to be a wallflower in junior high or high of school. Course, yeah. You don't want to stand out. But um, it started to give me a level of confidence in everything. So even around, like, people be like, oh, my gosh, are you going to sing at, you know, the Telcher? Are you going to sing at church this Sunday? Are you going to, like, just the the curiosity from people, is it, um, you know, and the support, I think was very helpful, you know? And, and mm. then I, I ended up, I think the the hard thing for me is growing up religiously speaking and everyone telling you in the beginning, like, I mean, it was like Don't play the passive devil's music. aggression, <laughs> yeah, right. like with wow. the like, well, you're singing for the Lord, aren't you? And I'm like, well, yeah, I mean, I feel like God made love and <laughs> God made all these other things that I like to sing <laughs> I about, that. you know, I love and that, Kelly. <laughs> justifying any song I wanted to sing. Um, but um, I don't know. I feel like that's when I started. I almost like that it happened like that, though, because... It really does force you. When people push something on you, it forces you to really look at if you like that or what you do like, mm. you mm -hmm. know? Um, when you're given guidelines, or not guidelines, but um, restrictions almost, you know, and, mm -hmm. and you have to play between the lines, you know, it's, well, what's outside the lines? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, it makes totally. you curious. And so then you just start to, I think, develop as an artist, like, whether it's people you're listening to or friends you're meeting that are kind of changing mm -hmm. the course of who you are as a person too, like character character wise personality wise but um but i don't really think if i'm being truly honest i don't think until i really got out on the road and started touring and really like meeting all these different artists on the road mm. all these different musicians pouring into me what they knew me mm. pouring what i you know had and like really that network and that um 
exchange of just um, musical backgrounds is like mm. incredibly important. You know, I remember like what my one boyfriend I had, like I'll forever be grateful. First of all, he's a good dude. But secondly, he introduced me to Patty Griffin and I was like, mm. you will forever be mm. held in high esteem <laughs> for me. Like it, it like really changed me as a songwriter. So mm. um, I, I don't know. I think I honestly didn't really figure that out because I think that's what sucks now is like there's no really a and ring anymore and there's no really time you spend with it. Like you two didn't hit right off the bat. You know what I'm saying? Prince didn't hit yeah. like right off the bat. It was like you they they built that and then they had that time to tour. They had that time to like marinate yeah. who they were, right? Yeah. And so it, I don't know. I think that that's kind of a lost art form and I didn't really figure out who I really wanted to be till then I think my 20s your first sort of international hit was Miss Independent I think mm -hmm. and I my impression of you even talking to you now but before talking to you but sort of someone who's followed your career is that you seem very independent and I, I kind of want to say something but let me know if we should edit it out because it might be sensitive but I remember you like fighting wait. back against I love that preface <laughs> <laughs> the, the, sort of like fighting back against the contract that you had with Idol and being kind of outspoken about it and to my knowledge like one of the only contestants who was you're making a face like that doesn't register am i oh no 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 i'm just saying sometimes people flip things um i had a i had a not so great relationship with rca i had mm. a great relationship with 19 records who um is actually the creator simon fuller is the creator mm. of idol it was a management company record yeah, company yeah. all that um no actually i have the craziest story about him i yeah, was um i was unhappy i had worked it was, i think it was like three years um with 19 and and it just i never actually worked with simon fuller like i worked mm. with everybody that he like hired out of america but, you know i don't even know if he really knew everybody i was working with you know it was that kind of and he is so kind and cool and finally mm. i called him i was like at an mtv iced out some new year's eve or something and i called him and i was and i was crying because i felt bad because i really do genuinely love simon fuller mm. he's very kind and cool and like is the main reason why I'm sitting here right now. So mm. other than like, obviously I work hard, but like mm. um, he heard me and immediately said, like didn't wasn't combative because I said, I, I love you, but like, I can't, like, I don't work with you. And this, I'm actually miserable with the people that mm. you've surrounded me with. Wow. <laughs> like, this is like, this is a, like, I might quit. Like, this is not fun. Like, it's not worth it. You know, um, I have a really big problem with people that lie. And so mm. I'm just like, especially little ones, I'm like, what the hell? Why are you lying about something little like that? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just, <laughs> it's a little odd. Um, and it's a red flag. So um, I had that conversation with him and he immediately said, I totally understand. I will let you out. I will, I, I will honestly even help you find new management and wow. I will help wow. you. Like, so he actually, the creator of Idol was very helpful in that. I had mm. a hard time with the other half of the, record label part which was um rca that was not fun mm -mm. Mm. and i i sort of remember you being outspoken about it somewhat yeah and it like registered for me as like a human like oh this girl is standing out and i feel like most people don't so i've had this impression of you maybe the fusion of that and miss independent is like kelly clarkson is so independent <laughs> and i i relate as an independent person but i lately have been feeling like i think i'm too independent like i think i'm <laughs> missing out on like there are blessings and joys that come from relying on other people and just like asking for help. Like I recently had really, really bad stomach virus and just like couldn't bring myself to ask anyone to walk my dogs. And I was like practically oh, passing out on the me. sidewalk. You're like, I can do it all. Yeah, yeah I was just yeah. like, I'm going to, I'm going to, they're my dogs. Like I'm going to figure this out. And so yeah. I just want you to know, what is your relationship to independence? And do you, are you really independent? Do you feel like you ever miss out on what comes from being a little more dependent on other people? I feel like age helps with that. So I, in my 20s, horrible at asking mm. for help horrible about being honest with people like around me that were very unhealthy people like around me and like mm. you know so I I was I would always walk on eggshells I would always I'm it's my tendency as a as a whatever childhood trauma to like try and make it okay so like and mm. I'll and I will accept things that you should never accept <laughs> as okay mm. you mm. know so I think my 20s were really hard and figuring that mm -hmm. out. But now, I mean, I think it's it's one of those things where I feel like I'm very independent, yes. Like, I I love doing things, but I literally, like, right before here, I was at my ranch in Montana, like, 
we're planting trees, we're planting gardens, I'm with mm. them, we're making trails, I'm moving giant trees from the trail, I'm sawing them, like, you know, I I love doing all that. So I like being yeah. independent, I like, the, I like the empowerment of it, but I'm yeah. also quick to look at my friend with me on the trail and be like, dude, can you, I'm dying. Like, I'm like, <laughs> so I'm, I'm also like able, I think, I think, um, and I guess the smarter way is to, able to, when you're put in a leadership position and you don't wanna be a leader, being able, like, learning how to delegate mm. respectfully mm. is a very hard thing, especially when you're young and you're younger than most people that you work with. That was a very hard learning curve for me. So that that actually helped me, though, be able to be dependent upon people and rely mm. on, on people. Mm -hmm. But I still haven't really found that in relationships. <laughs> but mm -hmm. um, but like mm -hmm. uh, professionally, like, no, I have a I walk a. I think a beautiful line of like being enough independent, you know, having enough independence rather. And then also mm -hmm. allowing people to one, do what they do and shine as well mm. and be able to help you because I love helping people. So why would you want to take that from someone? Mm -hmm. You know, that opportunity to feel good, like to help you too. Yeah. yeah. I love that you bring up that point, Nava. I was a special education teacher and a general education mm. teacher. I had both certifications. And when I was training in my classes for special education, a big part of the discourse is like independence, independence, independence. How do we help mm. all children, no matter what their needs are as a learner, to mm -hmm. be independent? And then I worked at a school with every classroom was integrated between special education and general education. You had two teachers. And um, they started to shift they realized that okay independence is important but what can we also learn about interdependence mm -hmm. helping students to mm -hmm. actually think become, outside themselves and also be helpers and also yeah exactly mm -hmm. and that helps not only the students who have special needs um teaches empathy for others students, yeah. yeah which i think yeah. is a really beautiful distinction i love it it's the worst idea to separate any kids, I get that it takes a lot of effort. We were just talking mm -hmm. about this beforehand too. Like even my kids um, are both dyslexic. So it's it's a really hard thing to ask a teacher, especially in public school system, which my I'm from, my mother was from when she taught. Mm -hmm. It's a hard thing you have, you know, 26 to 30 kids in a class. Yeah, <laughs> and, yeah. And, it's too many. And that's way too mm -hmm. many, first of all. Yeah. Um, and it's hard enough having that many if they're all in the same learning curve and they're all not. Yeah. There might be two each on the same learning path. Like it's like, yeah. you know, and but I do think it's so important to integrate because mm -hmm. you're shielding. It's just the same reason, too, when people come on my talk show, this is the same kind of metaphor. And they're like, oh, I really want my kids, you know, in inclusivity is so important. I'm like, 100 percent. And I'm not saying that for any other reason. Like, that's important for, like, they're like, oh, it's important for people to see what they can achieve. I'm like, it's also important for my kids to see other things, other cultures, mm -hmm. other people. That's important for everyone. Everyone wins in that environment, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so, I don't know. I think I think you're you're right. Like every kid learns in that environment and and it teaches empathy, which mm -hmm. is what I think we're missing as a society as a whole a yeah. lot of times. It moves us from like the goal being like individualism, mm -hmm. basically, to like community, mm -hmm. helping helping Mutualism. those around you. Yeah, looking outside yeah. yourself. That's super important. What is your relationship to the concept of a muse? Where do you draw inspiration from? Do you feel like it comes from a force outside of you? Do you still kind of believe in a higher power? Like, what's all that for you? Uh, yeah, I definitely believe in something bigger than all of us. Um, I grew up um, Southern Baptist. So um, I will say there was a lot that I didn't like about how I grew up or like things I saw. But I also had an amazing experience as well with certain people and that were you know, stepped in as like father figures or, you know, just supported me like as a kid that didn't have that, you know, so, um, and I got that via church and I got that, I don't know, as well, like keeping me out of trouble. I feel like I'm from like a, when you're from a small Southern town, there's not much to do except yeah. things you probably shouldn't. <laughs> so, um, so, or any small town maybe, but especially in the South, we get real bored. So, um, anyway, so I, I don't know. I, I feel like it kept me, it kept me grounded. It taught me let, to have a servant's heart. I love that. There's so much I can pull from my childhood and, and religion that I, mm -hmm. you know, a, a, am a part of, was a part of. But also, I think it has advanced into something that's like even more open in the sense of like getting to travel all across the world and seeing these different cultures and seeing how they worship and seeing what they worship and seeing 
what they hold in you know high regard and how it helps them and you know I just why would you not be open to like even hearing mm. what someone has to say you know yeah. speaking about spirituality and stuff like that um, so I'm always open um, and I I the first part of your question though is oh Muse, Muse yeah. Um, yeah do you believe so in that? I I was like I loved the first part I was trying to think of what you said um, I love a Muse. <laughs> I really do. Um, I think every artist does. So yeah. um, even if it's not like even in the song I Hate Love on this new record, like my muse were two movies. Like, you know, I love mm -hmm. The Notebook, but I also love It's Complicated because that's like real. <laughs> like, yeah. I know The Notebook love is real and out there. So quit hating on me. But I just mean <laughs> it's rare and it's very movie like. And yeah. so I I don't know. I thought it was kind of funny to point that out. And I think that you can. You know, you can be inspired by so many things, movies, other music, um, people in your life that will never know songs are about them. <laughs> like, mm. But um, but I, I I don't know. I think it's it's fun and it's uh, creative. And, and I, I like having a muse. I do. What is this complicated? <gasps> I can't. I'm, I'm like racking <laughs> my brain. Start some kind of. Do you, li do you and your wife live here? I'm like, do you live in New York? We do, yeah. Okay. Start some kind of movie like yeah. club with y'all. I'm but like, no, I, I feel like I know the title. I'm, Alec I'm, Baldwin, I'm, Steve Martin, Meryl Streep. Yeah, okay, that was like recent ish, 10 years ago ish. It was like a decade, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. All, right, all right. Yeah, Krasinski, I think, is in it. Like, there's a lot of great people in it. It's so good. But the, the point is, is that her character, which I related to, um, just hadn't concluded even though they'd been divorced, you know, for a while or separated or whatever, this character goes back to what she 100% should not go back to. But, right. like, yeah. you cannot mm. fight chemical reactions sometimes, you know? Yeah. Like, you mm. you can't fight that. It's, like, innate. There's a reason why you're attracted to each other in the first place. So yeah. um, the whole philosophy of, like, that's why I said I hate love. I don't hate love. I love love. But I just, I hate what love can do. Yeah. I hate that it can promote blinders <laughs> sometimes mm. um you know and i hate that you know you end up seeing hope and potential instead of mm, what's actually there so mm. um that that's what i just referenced I, that my muse sure, you know is sure. really those two movies for that song i get what you mean yeah there's mm. something we think about a lot you need here. to watch it yeah i i, I okay. that sounds like something i could watch with my my mom. I feel like my mom loves that. Oh my god! Anybody? <laughs> right? I love my kids. Watch it. My nine-year-old likes it. Okay. Mm. Yeah, it's funny. <laughs> yeah. Steve Martin and Meryl Streep get high at a party at their kids' party. It's hilarious. <laughs> it's, it's, I'll do it. It's I'll funny, do it. and it's like I mean, I'm like, man, jacket little pill. I got a whole basket yeah. I'm putting together Kelly, for you. You need to hang yeah. out with Penn, and yeah, let's indoctrinate him into oh pop culture. <laughs> but this is something that we think about a lot here: is like the 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 love. Um fantasy machine of mm. pop culture yes you know what i mean because you're talking about and what love. society tells you love is yeah and like yeah. It's, uh, you said something that i think is interesting which is you can't fight those mm -mm. those feelings and i i mean you I can mean, it's I've, just I've, hard I've, yeah yeah i agree with you and i think like what it really takes to Rather than, let's say, fight, let's say, like before we were saying, rather than independence, maybe there's interdependence. Because, like, the idea we have about independence is sort of a, a little bit of a fantasy, too. Like, a man is an island. Well, mm. that's ne that's never been true. Maybe if it was thousands of years ago, it's not anymore. We're yeah. all interconnected and we are interdependent. So, like, I wonder if we shouldn't be fighting those feelings as much as realizing, you know, what level of love they are. Because I feel like love, you know, we've we've made love so physical and sexual, yeah. you know, and and kind of b basic in a way. Yeah. But then there's the love that it takes it's to like you like, dumb it down. Yeah, right. And there's a love that it takes to like raise a child. Yeah. Which is such a different kind of like you mm. are be you know the patience and discipline you have mm -hmm. to show yourself in order to inculcate that in them i mean it's just and like, also just if i can interject like yeah. then the conversation no comes i'm going up. Uh, this is my show no no i'm just, no, sorry. No, I'm just gonna interject because you just please, brought up something please. important that i don't think people talk about a lot like when you do go through divorce especially with young kids mm. the definition of love comes up quite a bit because they're like mm. that's so true you well, don't wait, love daddy anymore wait so you don't love daddy anymore yeah. And I'm like, mm. wow. no, no. I was like, yeah. I love daddy. I love that daddy gave me you too. We just, we, we don't like each other like we did, you know? Right. And it's just different it's now. Harsh. And But then it comes into like, you see it in their face. And so you have these conversations because they question, can your love change for me? 
That's no. the whole thing. But, but we have a blended family. So I have a stepson. Oh. So I'm I'm well, well, and it's well, hard. well aware. It's and it, then it's hard when they go, Well, where's why don't why don't we have a grandpa from you? Mm. And then it's like, Well, wait, you told me love was different with a parent and a child than mm. with you know, with a husband and a wife. And mm. I go, Well, it is. Okay, well then well, it's not because your dad left you. Right. So like wow. why so that and you're like, I'm like you're like stop it with the question. Yeah, I was like I don't How know. Are you? I'm like I was like it's so and hard. It's and time. my daughter is nine and curious and mm. just yeah. needs wow. to know everything. You know, my son oh, yeah. is like not like that. He's he's yeah. different. He just has his own world and then all of a sudden he'll come out six months later and you'll be like you were listening to that like, totally no <laughs> yeah i love how children reveal that we're performing intellectual gymnastics around things that are very clear mm. yeah and mm. kind of straightforward you, yeah. you know what i mean mm -hmm. it's, and it's in relationships i think it's even yeah. like i remember the first time that that uh my wife said when i when her first my stepson was probably seven or eight something like that she use the term girlfriend very explicitly. She said, uh, she said, she mentioned some past relationship of mine and said, oh, that was his girlfriend. And then I remember thinking like, that's the first time he's heard that one. Let's see how this goes. Oh. Because the concept. No, the, that's the, the same the thing. So my them, kid will see like Justin Gorini and we dated for a bit after Idol. So he, they saw him. Somebody had me sign something. That horrible movie. Anyway, they 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 had me sign Wait. something, and my kids, yeah, it's horrible. No, no, I contractually do. obligated. <laughs> um, anyway, but they saw it, and they were like, "Wait, was this your boyfriend?" And I was like, mm. "Oh, well, actually, we did date for a little bit." Mm. And them putting that together. Yeah, they're like, "So you're so... with another man other uh -huh. than yeah. our father?" Mm. And why? Yeah, right. And they're like, "So, you, but yeah. you weren't married." Oh my God! And then there's the not... the question of like people they know and like uh, yeah. certain people are super religious, which is totally fine in their lives, and mm. you know maybe still frown upon you know having a kid before marriage, and right. yeah. some are more like, hey, life happens, you know, like that's maybe not how they want it or whatever. So there's people in their lives too that that's happened, and they're like. You can have a baby and not be married. And it's like, oh, mm. you know what? I just, they didn't tell you this in the handbook of right. having <laughs> children. And I was like, well, I don't want to have this question, this conversation. Yeah, it's really, really, really intense. And I think what's beautiful it's about involved. it, it's so involved. Yeah. Because I think in order to have that conversation well with them, yeah. Because in order to simplify anything, you have to understand it. And in mm -hmm. order to understand it, it's like, oh, you got to deal with your own. It really, what you end yeah. up doing Sometimes is. Sometimes you, you don't even realize you don't understand it yet. Well, exactly. Mm. You don't realize yep. it until they ask you, and you're mm -hmm. like, huh. How do I explain a boyfriend? Yeah. How do mm. I explain a girlfriend? It's not. It, you realize that it's actually not that clear necessarily because yeah, of our, our cultural rules around dating are kind of arbitrary and, and preposterous. Yeah. Mm. And and I just remember like limiting. What what it does is you, you you start to confront your relationships with your own parents, which no matter who you are, mm. they're the first ones at some point. And I mean this like in the best way. At some point, they let you down. Because they're not perfect. They are yeah. not God. They are not, but, you know. But that's almost freeing, I think, when you're older. I agree, yeah. And you go, oh, that wasn't about me. Mm. That was, like, about yeah. you. Like, that, that's just, just, just like, trying. my kids. Like, it's not about them sometimes. Yeah. It's just about me going through something. So it's kind of freeing to have that realization, I think, later in life. But, but also it's hard when you have kids and you're like, wow, then what was done to you or around you is almost like, mm. wait, what? Yeah. Mm, <laughs> then you look yeah. back and you're like, maybe that was really messed up. Like, and I didn't yeah, really yeah. realize it because it was my norm, right? Mm -hmm. So I don't know. There's a lot that happens. I think, you know, anytime somebody's like, oh, I want to have a kid, I'm like, okay, well, um, you just need to make sure, first of all, you're good with no sleep. And secondly, <laughs> um, that you're really like, are you good with you? Because mm -hmm. if you're not good with you, you're not going to be able to yeah. raise another human. Like, and you, it's, you're right. Mm. And you're never going to be totally good with enough. you. Yeah. yeah. Sophie's about to have a kid. Yeah. Oh. Getting pregnant. Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. I you was like, like, am I good with me? Do you, do you know? I was like, Sophie's going to spiral. This is. <laughs> do you know? Have you had a kid yet or is this first no. one? No, this is my first. That's it's a girl. Amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh. I'm so happy for you. I Thank cannot you. tell you. I I never wanted kids, by the way. I never thought I'd get married. Mm. I'm very much mm -hmm. like a, like just a wanderer. I like I like mm -hmm. life and mm. I like um I don't know. I like that I got to be selfish in my twenties and yeah. um 
then I ended up wanting kids later because I had stepkids um, whenever I, mm. I married. And mm. I was like, oh, this isn't like, this is kind of cool. So then it convinced me to have kids, right? Literally the greatest thing you'll ever be a part of. Mm. I know it sounds so cliche. Mm. There's nothing really to I've say that's that cooler before. than that. I know. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Let me like, get a pencil. I know. I know. <laughs> write, write this down. Make a bumper sticker. He has a jacket, t-shirt, little if you will. <laughs> nothing yeah. better than kids. No, but there isn't. There's nothing better. Like, even my nine-year-old yeah. little baby girl, mm. like, she's still, I remember her as a little one in my arms, and it's like she's sitting next to me, at, or actually next to me on this side, driving my ATV around the ranch at wow. nine, mm. and, like, just becoming this young woman, and it's yeah. literally you're gonna adore every stage. Aww. Some are gonna suck, but like <laughs> you'll yeah. still adore it because it's like even when they're being like hard, it's like you mm -hmm. kind of like that they're sticking up for themselves. Or they're, yeah. There's a little bit of independent mm -hmm. showing, so mm -hmm. you're gonna. Kelly I'm so Wee. happy for you. How fun! Thank you. Thank you yeah. so much. I'm I know we thrilled. have to wrap soon. I'm so sorry to jump in, but oh, I do want to make sure we ask so you about your album. No, mm -hmm. so can oh. you just tell us <laughs> like. Favorite song, sort of anything you want to share about chemistry, we yeah. would love to hear it. Yeah. Uh, well, I think the important thing for me was I was releasing the album um, was I didn't want everybody just to hear one song before it came out because I feel like to mm. diminish a relationship down to one thing, like one emotional state or stage of grief or whatnot, is mm. isn't cool. So um, I, I, you know, there's songs on there that are like favorite kind of high that are like very intense like you want to rip the person's clothes off with your teeth you know the beginning that mm. beginning chemical so, it sounds like it would actually take a long time yeah well then you're not good at it <laughs> um, <laughs> i'm just kidding um but i just you know what i'm saying that the fire yeah. in the beginning of a relationship mm -hmm. like there's nothing like that high of like mm -hmm. the the opportunity like this is what will happen like from this feeling mm. you know what i'm saying that's there's, there's nothing like that and then it kind of goes through different stages um of the relationship but I will say my favorite is that I tell people about. I'm like, if you're going to listen to the album, you're just going to listen to one song. At least listen to, like, Lighthouse. That's my that's my favorite mm -hmm. one, I think, right now. Um, it's a sad song because it was the moment that I figured out it, um, it was over. Like, I couldn't try anymore. I was like, this is... Mm no one's happy here <laughs> so you know one of us has got to make the move you know mm -hmm. um so that that was a really hard song to write but I think it's the one because it was so hard to write it matters the most to me because like I made it through it so I don't know I feel like if anybody's ever been through that kind of hurt like it's highly relatable kelly i loved all the songs but i was telling them before you hopped on i am obsessed with magic i was like playing that song on repeat that's my yesterday, band's favorite. all day it's that, so i just it's my favorite song you've ever released and it's one of my favorite songs i've ever heard i like couldn't get enough of it yesterday oh. i was just playing it all day i was driving around like driving longer to just like keep listening to it she oh said my she God. played it 30 to 40 times yeah i did i did wow. Dude, and i kept I having love, to log you know, in that's so funny <laughs> like, literally in my band in. everybody remarked on that because yeah. we played the whole record for this show in la and yeah. everyone was like oh my god magic and i was like i it's that song uh means a lot of different things for me personally but yeah. that chant at the end is like you can 100% tell I'm an Annie Lennox fan. <laughs> like, yeah. It's so Annie Lennox on that. Um, uh, sorry for kind of ripping your vibe, Annie, but I just, <laughs> I, I love her. And I just, it was what I wanted. I was like, oh, it's like when you're listening to Annie Lennox and she does that thing where she like talks mm. but sings. Mm, yeah. And yeah. it just feels like a chant or something. Like, yeah, I love yeah. that song. That song, and, it, and that's the thing, Lou. It didn't work out, but like, what a beautiful thing. Like if I die tomorrow, like I got to feel that. Like I got to feel yeah. something so magical at some point. I got to feel so much love and, mm. and uh, that not everybody gets that, you know? So yeah. that's why I like that song. It's about hope, so. Aww. Yeah. And you yeah. got a good record. Thank you. It's amazing. You know, it's an amazing record. Everyone like should it. go stream it now. It's so good. If you could go back to 12 year old Kelly <laughs> and, uh, Say or do anything. What would you, what would you say? You know, I mean, I've been asked this before, and then I, you know, no, it's actually, an original question. I'm... No, 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 no. I've been asked this before, like in just life, because I remember when that there's a Brad Paisley song that came out. I think it was Brad Paisley. And it was like what you would tell your 16 year old self or something, mm. and it happened in an interview once, and I and I was like, huh, and I always make a joke usually at this point um, if somebody asks me this, but I think I think what I'd probably tell myself is like things may seem like so huge, like in the moment. But like I promise you it's gonna be fine. Like everything seems so massive, like like when something doesn't go right, right? And I think that we tend to, especially in our youth, everything is so detrimental. Mm. Like it's just like just ride it out. Like it's gonna be fine. <laughs> I, I I think that would have saved me 
and maybe maybe teach myself how to catch some red flags <laughs> like, <laughs> and like you know leave them where they are <laughs> instead of collecting them <laughs> um so i don't know i think i think maybe that um it's hard though because then at the same time i don't know that i'd actually tell myself anything because i think all those things got me to this point of course yeah yeah it's a yeah. terrible question no it's a good question <laughs> but i just i don't know that i i don't know that i would you want to it's almost like would you change anything no i would not change yeah, yeah. No, i actually no i wouldn't and you know we're I've, I've asked enough people this question now that um that my you know my evolving personal answer is like i would want to demonstrate to that boy that i'm willing to listen and i would really want to hear i mm. i'm more interested i want i wish i could recall more specifically hmm. what i would have said to me now you know mm. yeah because i think what i think you know, the reason being That's young is hard is 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 the same reason that we can't always recall kind of our essence then it's it's, it's something i don't want to i don't feel like in my case something has been lost but i think it can be yeah and I, mm. I actually wish I could hear something very straightforward for myself then because that's when I was learning and I think a lot of us learn to start hiding who you are you are yeah. becoming who you are but mm -hmm. then you are learning how to hide that and that's a sh that's, yeah. that's 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 not a just society we shouldn't have that here's I agree completely here's what's scarier than what you just said is when you have your kid mm, you see that happen <laughs> yeah. and you're looking at them and you're like oh no yeah. Like, mm. this whole time I thought... I was going to keep you from that. This whole time yeah. I thought I was going to help you and can steer you clear right. from... The, and mm. it turns out you easy. are my little identical twin mm. when it comes <laughs> to some things, you know? So that's yeah. a hard pill to swallow. But, I mean, I guess you have the experience to at least sit in it with him and maybe the is what you said. Maybe it's just listening Yeah. to mm. her, you know, and to him. Yeah. Well, people, so. people don't seem to, it's hard to listen to your parents. I think yeah. if somehow, yeah. that's my goal is like, if my kids can, I will say, can, if I they have, want to, I want them to want to listen. Yeah. I was going to say, I was, I was going to say, I'm pretty, my, my kids are pretty respectful. Like, you know, any kid mm. can be a turd sometimes, but like, you know, we all can <laughs> even adults, but like, yeah. I just mean my, my kids are pretty respectful, but I do find myself all of a sudden being like. I mean, doing that parent thing. Like, yeah, yeah. I don't, I'm not going to go through the time right now to describe to you or explain mm -hmm. to you why. I'm not, I can't take that time every time. I just said, go do it. Like, just yeah. go do yeah. it. Like, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, I'm like, I can do that tomorrow. Today, yeah. I'm running on empty. So <laughs> yeah. I need totally you to sense. gather your troops and get it done. <laughs> like, yeah. It's like, yeah, that's, but for the most part, I'm pretty, I'm, I'm pretty, um, I don't know, I've, 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 I've developed a pretty healthy relationship with them as far as like, mm. you know, when I ask them not to do something, they generally are pretty good about following that. So mm. that's amazing. Well, mm -hmm. now we're, we're going over. We could keep going. Yeah. I'm it was, sorry. I'm it a was, talker. No, 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 no. Okay. It, it, we, we love we, you, Kelly. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but it was such a pleasure to have you. Thank you for coming. No, thank you all yeah. for having me. Um, and next time, if I do see you all in person, I'm going to hug you. Like a weird, oh, awkward, so long yeah. hug <laughs> so that you won't it. appreciate. <laughs> <laughs> we will. I'm going gonna, gonna to hold on tighter. Bye, y'all. Okay. Bye. Bye, Kelly. You can buy Kelly Clarkson's new album, Chemistry. It's out now. Uh, and you can also watch The Kelly Clarkson Show on weekdays on NBC. You can also keep up with her online at Kelly Clarkson. It's hilarious. I came out, I was talking to my crew like right when I ran into him. Mm -hmm. And my videographer Weiss was giving me shit. <laughs> I was like, fuck you, Weiss. <laughs> yeah. And I literally said, fuck you, Weiss, and turned to look at Penn and was like, oh, hi. <laughs> it was, was the like, sweetest fuck you. Yeah, it was a really nice fuck you. But it was like, I was like, I was like, well, that's the way to like, meet someone. Kelly Clarkson, America's sweetheart. Yeah. <laughs>